Nordstrom. <coughs> Excuse me. I did my smart growth audit on Arden Hills, Minnesota. I was incorporated in 1951, 9.6 square miles, the classic ray, uh, classic second ring suburb. Um, it was largely built out by the 1970s. It's relatively small, very uh, affluent. Um, as far as a regional context, it's surrounded by New Brighton, Moundsview, Shoreview, and Roseville. Um, it has some major amenities, including a significant infrastructure network, uh, 694, kind of bisects it. Um, its western boundary is 35W and uh, uh, Lexington uh, is the eastern border. Um, has a significant amount of lakes within the uh, interior of the city. Um, and it also has the TCAP site, the Twin Cities Army Ammunition Plant, which is that large expanse up there on the Google map that looks totally undeveloped. Um, as far as water, they buy from Roseville Schools. They're part of the Moundsview uh, School District. They have a high school and elementary within their city borders. And then there's a small little section down here that is part of the uh, New Brighton School District also. These are the population projections and employment projections. Um, you can see a pretty good job uh, housing balance, which I'll touch on later. But um, these are significantly higher than So here you can kind of see the urban form context, um, very curvilinear streets all, all through here around the lakes. Um, what I consider concentrated poverty, this is the only uh, affordable housing tract. It's all um, manufactured homes. It's the only part of the city that is manufactured homes, and it's the only part that really has traditional lot sizes. Um, and then you can see that roughly a third of the developed area is park preserve, which is significant, but is also highly privatized. So take it for what it's worth. Um, you can see the TCAP site here. This is a close up of the mobile home area, or manufactured home, I should say. And then this is the TCAP site. You can see that it has a lot of roads and railways and stuff like that that was used. Give you some quick history. We used during World War II to produce ammunition. Um, they used solvents for cleaning the brass ammunition casings and that spoiled the water supply for New Brighton. So they're currently in a contract to clean up underground aquifers for like the next 60, 60 years, I believe. They're pumping water out, cleaning it, putting it back in the aquifer continuously. Uh, it's, Kind of notorious for hazardous waste. There's also uranium left behind by Honeywell during some um, experiments, which supposedly has been cleaned up, but I don't know how you clean up half life. So, uh, so Ramsey County wants to purchase 430 acres of this site from the General Services Administration, which was the government uh, arm that basically can sell um, Army land. So this was owned by the Army. They want um, this section, the, the western third. All right, um, so strengths, they mention everything in their plans, um, which that should tell you something. I'll, I'll talk about that in weaknesses as well. Um, so they touch on renewable energy, TOD, affordable housing, air quality, all of that. Um, they look at the TCAP as a silver bullet. They don't meet the, the density requirements for the Met Council Regional Development Framework. They're at 2.29, they need a three. Um, but they're considered fully built out because this is all institutional land. It's not, it's not zoned as developable um, other than by the city. Um, the, I should say the new city plans. Um, it, it wasn't in the old. So uh, 
uh, they they look at that for affordable housing. They look at that for mixed use. They look at it for getting the densities up. They, they very much look at it as, as a fix all. Um, and then, as far as green space, they have uh, the endangered landing turtle that um, lives in this area here. So they're going to turn that into a wildlife habitat as part of the new proposed development. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. They 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 have their ducks in a row of green space. Um, strong policies for the management of floodplains. Uh, and then their job housing balance is um, traditionally pretty good as far as suburbs go, um, mostly because of the uh, Boston Scientific and Land O'Lakes. Uh, so their weaknesses, um, the planner outright admitted to me they're very interested in maintaining the status quo. Uh, that's why there's not many policies um, to strengthen everything that's mentioned in the comprehensive plan. It's very expensive. Um, Lake lots go over 800,000 to 2.5 million, which is rapidly becoming um, unaffordable for the people who even currently live there. They have no subdivision um, um, policies other than to frown highly upon it and do everything but make it illegal. Um, and minimum lot sizes are, are significantly larger than very strong street hierarchy, and there's policies in place to discourage through traffic. Um, infill is mentioned in some of the small area plans for B2 and Red Fox, Gray Fox, uh, which are their commercial areas to the east, um, but they leave it to market forces, so there's nothing to incentivize it so it doesn't happen. Um, and then, of course, the Silver Bullet deal. Um, they had the Ryan plan, which was going to develop 2,100 acres. They now are looking at purchasing 430 by the county. Ryan backed out in 2008. Um, and then we had the Viking Stadium. They they found, oh, thought they found greener pastures. Apparently they did not. Okay, uh, thank you. All right. Time's up. Questions? <coughs> you had mentioned the one third of the uh, TCAP area that was looking to be purchased and developed. Uh, what yep. was the plan for the other two thirds? Uh, so the other two thirds, um, you probably know, this is AHATS. It's an Army National Guard training site where they teach and store. So they have a uh, sort of uh, ton of vehicles there, and they, they basically um, teach people how to drive uh, military vehicles on that site. So it's kind of like a big off-road course. But they're very, according to the city, the Army is very good at um, managing the land now. Um, it's basically a preserve. They don't a lot of small um, buildings that are kind of gutted. There's not, not much left, and then there's a lot of um, foundations for buildings. But it was set up as an army base, so the buildings are all one story, pretty small, and, and very far apart. So, uh, and it's not it's not up for development. They're only they're going to buy that third, and the rest. Um, this part will be the wildlife management area, and then this will all stay with the guard on a permanent lease from the. business and mixed use residential so they're kind of looking at, at that as their cure all to get their densities up. When you said they were at 2.9 something, did that mean dwelling units an acre? Or uh yeah. No. Uh people what? per unit I, or no. No, you're right. Yep, dwelling. Yeah. I'm confusing myself. There was two different metrics that I was looking at and that was the that was the one that Matt also was after. And so they they need 3.0 um, to meet development standards for the regional framework for the Met Council like the regional plan. So they, they don't qualify for a lot of stuff, even though they still get it because they're considered built out when really they, depending on how you look at it, they're not really built out. Um, can you just go back over your recommendations? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so they kind of counter the weaknesses on the left-hand side. I'm not sure why that one doesn't show up. Um, so develop some policies concerning air and energy. Um, they're going to develop that TCAP site soon. The county and the city are going ahead with it. Um, it, it looks like it's actually going to happen this time. They're designing um, their own plans and stuff. So they need to get these policies in place if they really want them to be effective instead of just uh, breezing over it in the comprehensive plan. The 
sewer infrastructure exists. It's built out for the 2,100 acres that uh, Ryan was originally going to buy. So they can develop the TCAP in a phased approach as they want. They should just get shovels in the ground and begin to do this um, instead of letting it pass by again or letting the market forces uh, intervene, what have you. Uh, so the B2 commercial area has a So for the Red Fox, Gray Fox, which is another business <coughs> center to the north of B2, and combined these are kind of like their um, central business district. She was, my, the planner I interviewed was hesitant to kind of call it that, but um, they should put in more incentives to get the stuff that, that they actually want to see happen, because there's a lot of older sites on Red Fox that could be upgraded. Thanks a lot.